Hello everyone. The sixth of the program that I have called FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions, deals with the problem of vocabulary. Now I call it the problem of vocabulary because I know many learners are very worried to use the language if they think they don't know enough words. Naturally so, because words are the bricks of a wall you might call language, grammar and all the rules might be the cement that keeps them together. But without bricks, it's very difficult to build that wall. Okay. Um, the wall metaphor is not very good for language because it, it, it's about communication, but you'll understand. Vocabulary are the bricks that you need to function in a language. Now, if you have listened to everything I have said from the beginning, you would know that I consider reading to be one of the most important ways in which you can get vocabulary, get used to the language. Because when you read, you see words in context. Now, many people think that learning a list of words is a good way to go about learning a language. Um, it may be, it might work for you. I personally think it's a little difficult to do that. Because to remember words outside of a particular context is generally not easy. So I have seen sometimes picture books for children with like say a scene of a kitchen with everything then named like plate, dishes, fork, spoon, which actually might work better because you remember things as a group within a particular context, which makes it easier. So I'm sometimes very surprised when I here people say learn 10 words a day because learning disparate in not connected words might be a bit difficult, but if, if it works for you, please go ahead. Um, as I always say, these are my ideas which can easily be wrong, which might not fit you. So take what I say only if you think it works for you. So my first, my first advice to you, like always, please start to read in English, if you haven't already, read what interests you. If what interests you is too difficult, try to find level readers. But someone like me, I still enjoy children's books. If you can do that, start there. Otherwise, if you listen to some of the interviews I have done before, they would have said what they read to make it interesting for them. Today, I'll deal with a particular uh, concept or a particular, not even a concept, something called affixes, which are things you fix to one word to give it a similar but different place in the sentences. For example, if you say beauty, and if you know the word beauty, what it means, you would know that beautiful is also another word, beautifully is another word, and so on and so forth, that, so that you have a rough idea of how to use Many words with the same meaning, more or less, if you know one core meaning. And these are what you would call an affix. Let me put that word up. This is at a slightly higher level than you would be if you are just simply learning words ad hoc. But if you have some knowledge of the language, knowing what affixes are will definitely help you. Affixes can be divided into prefix and suffix. Prefix is a word that comes before a, another word. A suffix is something that comes after. For example, if you take the word moral, you can make someone who is not moral is called immoral. And that normally means the opposite of um, morality. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this in detail later, but this is just to show you what pre means. Pre means before. Suffix, for example, if I use, take the word kind, and kindly would be something which is uh, the, the adverb of kind. So adjective turned into an adverb, and that is done only because there is a suffix there. I have made a chart, which probably is going to be quite boring, but it will actually help those who want to do this a little bit seriously. And um, please pause the um, 
pause the video and get this down if it helps you, right? So I've given this list just to show you that sometimes if you know the core meaning of a particular word, you can easily guess what it, it is doing within that sentence. So I've div uh, I'm starting with prefix prefixes here. And this first batch, if those letters come at the beginning of a sentence, they would normally make the meaning opposite, right? So if, for example, social, you know, I mean, you can probably guess what social is because even the get togethers in the campus is called the social. So if you have the word anti, A-N-T-I, before the word social, it means the opposite. So social, antisocial, someone who is not a very sociable person. Climax, anticlimax, not the most important thing, opposite, anti. D does the same thing. It makes something have the opposite meaning, activate, deactivate, degrade, agree, disagree. So this is another prefix that makes it opposite. Approve, disapprove, connect, disconnect. Ill also makes it opposite. Legal becomes illegal. Logical becomes illogical. Possible becomes impossible. Moral, immoral, I did that. Um, a moral person is someone who has a good value system. Immoral is someone who doesn't have a good value system. There's something called a, a moral. If you just put the word A, it means neither here or not. They are not moral, not immoral. He has no value system at all. Justice, injustice makes it opposite. Fiction, non-fiction, kind, unkind. All these things are, it's up there. So you can just uh, take the words down, should you wish. And there are other things. Auto means self-starting, biography, autobiography, circum, going around, circumvent, co means together, exist, coexist, existing together. Extra means beyond something. So curricula means within the school system or within the institution. Uh, extra curricula means beyond that. Co means with that, co-curricular. So co means together. Hetero means different. Heterogeneous, heterosexual, uh, of, um, opposite sexes attract. Homo, homogenized, homogeneous, homosexual, uh, same uh, sex attraction. Hyper means over. So active, hyperactive, too, too active. Mega means large, micro means small. Mid means middle. It, because in, in my talk in English, I'm not going to go through the whole list because it's easily, you can easily pick this up from any internet site. So just to show you that there are so many prefixes you can learn, which will help you guess what that word does. Then in suffixes, very often if you know, for example, the, uh, the noun of something, you can make other things. Nature means you know what nature, if you know what nature means, if you put A-L, it becomes an adjective. Nature, natural, right? Natural is an adjective. If you put L-Y, naturally, it becomes an adverb. So, so on and so forth. You can keep changing or, or making other users of a particular word of which you know the meaning. So, taste is a noun. Tasty is an adjective. Tasteful is an adjective. This tasteful, you put the opposite meaning at the beginning. The problem here is, as most things in English, one rule doesn't apply for everything, right? There is a difference. There is a change. So you've got to kind of know what to add where. But if you see something this at the beginning, you can guess it's the opposite of what the whole word means. So these things help. In this, I'm not going to go equal, equality, fond, I'm fond of someone, the verb, if you put N-E-S-S, it becomes a noun, fondness, kind, kindness. So this whole list, go through it slowly if you wish. I have it here or go to any internet uh, good, like kind of a British Council website and see what these lists are, very easily learnable. This is just to, in my Singhala one, I went through the whole list. In the English one, I don't need to, uh, but go through it yourself and see how the suffixes and the, the prefixes twist, put the, put the word in another category, almost always, 
or if you can roughly guess at the core meaning, you will be able to guess at the other one also. Kind, if you know un means opposite, unkind. Kind, kindly, right? All that. Help, helpless, no help. Hope, hopeless, no hope. Things like that. So this is one, knowing affixes will really make you improve your confidence in thinking, I don't know many words because it's, it's a way of navigating yourself through similar words, right? So my again, my advice, how do we improve our vocabulary? Please expose yourself to the language in another, probably my final program, I'll be talking about how to expose yourself to the language in, in, in fun ways, but try to read, try to watch films, Try to listen to English songs, which naturally, because your curiosity is aroused, you might want to know the meaning of, right? And today, what I showed you through affixes was another way of learning what affixes are, what the common affixes are, so that you can probably connect many words with the same co-meaning and know automatically what they mean in a particular sentence. Thank you very much.